Hello friends, my name is Dr. Shimon Jamshid and I will be teaching the course of Computational Fluid Dynamics. So that's about my a brief introduction about mine. I am a doctor engineer Shimon Jamshid. I attend my PhD from National University of Sciences and Technology in Computational Heat Transfer. I have done my MSc in CFD from Cranfield University UK and I did my mechanical engineering from Indian University of Engineering and Technology Karachi. So we will begin with the introduction of computational fluid dynamics. Objective of this course is are to familiarize you with the general concepts and basics of fluid dynamics and its essential computational generally required for designing like aerodynamics, aerothermodynamics, fluid dynamics, etc, etc. And there is a need to incorporate these concepts and available knowledge into the design of a system. This is a course of mine and you can view it in detail when in your free time and uh, because it's uh, hard to read uh, the whole syllabus uh, bit and uh, glimpse is that it's introduction to computational fluid dynamics in which I will discuss the continuity equations, nearest top equations, partial differential equation, then we will discuss the fundamentals of discretization, which will include finite element, finite difference and finite volume methods, some basics and illustration through 1D steady state diffusion problems, and uh, then we will discuss the important consequences of discretization of time dependent diffusion types and stability analysis like uh, dispersion and dissipation issues etc. Stability analysis will be discussed and uh, finite volume discretization of 2D and steady problems will be discussed. Then we will discuss a simple algorithm and uh, which is mostly used for incompressible flows. And then we will move to turbulence modeling and uh, I will uh, give a separate lecture on that topic because it's the most important topic of the <coughs> Excuse me. In computational fluid dynamics studies, then uh, we will go to software, and uh, I will be giving you lectures on using the Flint software, which is a product of uh, Ansys Incorporation, and then we will uh, look upon the high-performance computing. These are the books uh, for your guidance and uh, which I will refer to you uh, the most famous book is computational fluid dynamics the basis with application is by John D. Anderson and uh, this author is very good pretty good and he teaches as uh, by word by word and with the basics like you learn alphabets and then words and form sentences and the grammar of English this author teaches like that and then we will uh, have uh, Klaus Hoffman and Steve T. Chan, Competition for Dynamics Volume 1. It's uh, a way of uh, talking on way of writing is also very simple and very good book for uh, beginners. But it's a little bit uh, elaborative. So it's uh, Volume 1 and then this uh, there is Volume 2 which is for some a bit advanced Competition for Dynamics courses and then uh, there is volume 3 which is on uh, advanced turbulence modeling a book uh, with uh, which mostly covers the incompressible fluid dynamics uh, portion is by Versti and Malala Sakera which is an introduction to computational fluid dynamics the finite volume method basically he has adopted the techniques techniques uh, that were introduced by Patankar earlier in his book Completion Heat Transfer so it's also a good book but uh, mainly the two books are the above two which I would highly recommend to study so guys we move to CFD introduction CFD is a branch of fluid dynamics as you all may know that fluid dynamics is the basics of uh, is the main core which covers the port, uh, the branches like pure theory and pure experiment 
and CFD is one of the branches of fluid dynamics. Major CFD applications include aircraft, aerodynamics, propulsion structures, controls, manufacturing others, spacecraft where it is used in aerothermodynamics, propulsion, aeroblasticity to com compute thermal effects on any body and we have aerodynamics and mental testing. Automobiles, engines uh, and aerodynamics of uh, cars, electronics or the equipment used in the cars, hydraulics of machinery or uh, the equipments like uh, radiators involved in the car system, industrial design and many other things. Medical and uh, yes CFD has application in medical as well. It is widely used in studying the hematology, the study of blood, drug effect, the diffusion and diffusion of uh, uh, sorry, uh, the diffusion and dispersion of drug into the arteries or veins. Angiography, where the dye is injected into the veins in uh, order to see the effect of uh, block block artery, and then stomach. Uh, this and the dissolving of the food particles into the stomach and chemical effect and a lot of other things etc so uh, as i have said that it is widely used in aerodynamics field to study the lift and drag to study the buffeting to study elasticity and a lot of stuff for improved in uh, proper designing so we can have aerofile study, we can have the re-entry vehicle, we can have the wake of the we can study the wake of the airplane, aircraft flow, etc. Then uh, CFD can be used in uh, chemical process engineering, mixing and separation, polymer modeling, external and internal environment of buildings, wind loading, heat and ventilation, marine engineering, doors on offshore structures, environmental engineering distribution and influence and polyturns. It can be also used in hydrodynamics of ships, it can be used in power plants, combustion and diesel and petrol engines and gasoline engines, turbo machinery, flows inside rotating passages, diffusers, etc. It is also used widely in hydrology and oceanography, flow in rivers and oceans, meteorology, weather prediction, biomedical engineering, blood through arteries and veins as I have mentioned earlier electric and electronic engineering cooling of equipment including microcircuits. CFD is comprised of three main branches uh, which are the computational science, fluid dynamics and mathematics. So now the patience is over. What is basically CFD? What basically CFD is? CFD is computational fluid dynamics is a branch of fluid mechanics for analyzing fluid flow with the help of calculations or computations. This is done by solving the governing equations which are mainly the partial differential equations. These are broken down into a set of algebraic equations which are obtained by discretizing, discretizing the equations onto certain number of cells or points. CFD also helps us in gaining the solution of partial differential equation by discretizing the equations and as you know that a computer does not understand what a partial differential equation is, so the equations are broken down or discretized at various points to get algebraic equations. Although a computer does not understand algebraic equation as well, but this is uh, just to make you understand that uh, the human interpretation and the computer interpretations are different. So basically, computer does work on one zero and zero one on binary numbers. So these algebraic equations are later on translated into machine language and computer then solves the equations. So computer can easily solve and understand these equations and solve them by using linear algebra. So what is meant by linear algebra? In by linear algebra we mean that the equations are solved using certain matrices methods to in order to solve the matrices and these matrices can be solved by several methods like gauss Edel, tridiagonal technique, Jacobi addition, neutron graphs, and Runge-Gutta and so on. So applying the first law of thermodynamics and Newton's second law of motion on fluid particle, we have three set of equations. 
mass equation, momentum equation, and energy equation. These three equations in fluid dynamics are collectively called the Navier-Stokes equation. So now, guys, a beef. Sorry uh, for my uh, a little bit stammering in the accent. So a brief history of CFD. Since 1940s, analytical solution to most fluid dynamic problems was available for so idealized solutions. So what happened then? Methods for solution of ordinary differential equation or partial differential equations were conceived only on paper due to absence of personal computer. Okay. So at that time computers were too big. They were big as uh, double size of your room. So, or more than that. So, it was very hard to solve anything on computer. People usually trust on the paperwork rather than on computers. Daimler Chrysler was the first company to use CFD in automotive sector. And then, uh, later on in the end of the 20th century, there are a number of companies and software in the CFD field in the world that emerged and some of the famous softwares are Fluent, CFX, Star CD, Star CCM, Fastran, CAM, Concentration Heat and Momentum, which was developed by 1981 by Professor Spalding. And this goes on. Star CD was developed and developed in 1987 by Professor David Kosman. Up until 1960s, the underlying concept of fluid mechanics and algorithms for solving the governing equations were established. New challenge was the development of powerful computers to solve these equations numerically. Nurturing of CFD can be seen in the era of 60 to 2000, where modern tools had been developed. So, regarding the aerofoils and uh, aeroplane flows, we can see the development in 60s like birth of commercial jet transport Boeing 707 and DC-8 so the main interest the main interest arose in the study of transonic drag rise phenomena and there was a uh, little data available in uh, the form of experiments or the analytical treatment of transonic aerodynamics so there was no understanding what happens in transonic regime and then supercomputers were were born and uh, initially CDC 6600 as we heard the name is the was a famous computer so what was what happened in the transonic regime was that the Mach number transonic is basically not the supersonic regime exactly it's a basically a transition from subsonic to supersonic so the range is from 0.8 to 1.2 in that regime the Mach number which is the ratio of the local velocity to the sound velocity just suddenly take a rise and then after transonic regime suddenly drops down so there was an interest in that phenomenon that uh, with respect to Mach number the drag suddenly increases in this regime that's why this area was of particular interest in the aerodynamic community from it in 1800s to 1960s research in fluid mechanics focused upon analytical methods like we saw the Blasius solution frontal mirror expansion waves and the Reynolds transport theorem and Reynolds number itself so analytical methods with exact solution to navier stokes equation were developed 18 known for similar problems for example laminar pipe flow and there were approximate methods like ideal flow, boundary layer theory, etc. Experimental methods were also being developed at, during this era. They were consisted of they consisted of scale models, windows, water tunnels, towing tanks, etc. Measurement techniques were developed. Retort tubes were there. Hot pipe probes were there. Anemometers were developed. And uh, another technique which is still in use was uh, laser Doppler velocimetry and particle image velocimetry so uh, mostly the engineering systems were made in a way that they were man-made systems so the approach was iterative like build and test 
approach was adopted so we can say that 1960s to date is the rise of the cfd technique i am saying the rise of the cfd technique because still the advanced techniques of like uh, cfd like direct numerical simulation is not possible without the aid of heavy supercomputers so cfd process cfd process comprises of three basic stages the pre processing solving the equation and the post processing before proceeding further i would like to i would like you to know the basics of mathematics mathematical operations that are necessary in order to move forward in the cfd domain so understanding these basic operators will definitely definitely help you in learning the advanced cfd concepts much easier much easily so first of all is the del operator del operator is basically the represents the gradient of anything so it is represented by partial by partial x partial by partial y partial by partial z and obviously in the numerator you can add u v w or t for temperature etc then there is laplacian operation which is the dot product of two del operators it is expressed as tau square by tau x square plus tau y square upon tau y square plus tau square by tau z square and obviously there would be some vector for representing the velocity and uh, the gradient is uh, expressed with the, along with the del operator here which i have had uh, told you that the del operator is definitely used with some variable like pressure velocity or temperature then vector gradient vector gradient is obviously the gradient of a vector like in the above equation the pressure was mentioned here the velocity is mentioned divergence divergence is the dot product of the gradient with the velocity vector so what happens is that in dot product in dot product the pro dot product is equal to the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied by of cos of the angle between them so what happens is that del is basically dv by dv x plus dv by dv y plus dv by dv z and u is basically u x i plus u y j plus u z k so when you multiply two vectors taking a dot product between them and the in uh, definitely the magnitude what happens is that i dot i becomes equal to 1 because the angle is zero cos zero is equal to 1 so the i dot i becomes equal to 1 so dava u by dava x remains then if i multiply dava u by dava x i with dava u by dava x of j the product will be zero because cos of 90 equal to zero and similarly dava u by dava x i multiply by dava u by dava x of k will also give zero and similarly other terms dava v by dava y and dava w and dava z are obtained then another vector which is used in the nearest stoch equation as you will see soon is u dot delta which is u multiplied by the partial derivative uh, dava by dava x plus v dava by dava y plus w dava by dava z and obviously the del will be equipped with some component like pressure or velocity so we have velocity field and pressure field viscosity v density d or rho which are constants and external force f so combining these we can form the navier stokes equation as dava u by dava d equal to minus u dot del of u plus v which is uh, new sorry new del square of u minus 1 upon d or rho 
del p plus f you should uh, i would recommend that you should memorize this equation otherwise it's not very hard to learn by heart uh, the reason is that it's very it's written in a very it's one of its basic forms the leftmost terms is uh, the transient term which is the partial derivative of a vector with respect to time so for a steady flow this term will become zero a vector is also represented a vector field in fact is represented by the term acceleration so du by dt represents the acceleration now acceleration is expressed in two forms the one of the form is with respect to time and the other form is with respect to space so the right equation uh, right uh, hand side of the equation and the first term of the right hand side of the equation represents the space terms of the acceleration which is u dot del of u okay guys i hope this is not very much difficult you can ask question you can post questions on that if you want then the third term or the second term in the right hand side of the equation is the viscosity term and del square u represents the laplace operator okay so when the viscosity is multiplied by the second derivative of the velocity it becomes the shear stress terms for an inviscid flow this term will become zero because the viscosity will become zero then we have the pressure term it indicates the pressure field and f indicates the external force which could be the volumetric heat transfer heat generation terms or the body force like magnetic force or the gravity lastly we have the continuity equation which is the famous equation you might have known from your undergraduate course in fluid dynamics that del dot u equal to zero velocity field u has zero divergence net mass change of any sub region is zero this means that mass in equal to mass out as is written in the next line flow in equal to flow out and uh, we can change the assumptions like incompressible fluid so we get this equation from continuum assumption that delta dot u equal to zero continuum assumption means that a continuity equation can be applied and the flow is continuous it means that there is no space or uh, there is no extraneous space between molecules and the flow is continuous in the form of the presence of the particles so we have another equation which is the momentum equation and uh, basically as i have uh, explained you earlier the nearest stoke equation contains the four components the advection convection term the diffusion term the pressure term and external force advection convection uh, includes the uh, uh, these terms are on the right hand side of the nearest stoke equation the left side term is called as the transient terms or the unsteady terms the right terms are named as the first one is advection convection then diffusion terms which is includes the viscosity and the pressure force and the external force so guys we will continue with that i will explain you the fluid mechanics subdomains and uh, i will begin my next slide from this thank you very much